Hello, English students. This lesson is about relative clauses and reduced relative clauses. First of all, what is a relative clause? Relative clauses begin with relative pronouns such as who, that, or which. For example, the girl who has red hair is my sister. So this part here that's underlined is the relative clause. Who is the relative pronoun? And this whole thing here, the relative clause, is telling us more about the girl. Who is usually used for people. That's why we're using who here, because we're talking about a girl. And that and which are usually used for things. The ice cream that was left on the table has melted. So we're using that because we're talking about ice cream, which is a thing. And this whole thing here, this whole clause that's underlined is telling us more about the ice cream. Relative clauses follow immediately after the noun that they are describing. So, example, I might buy the big green house that was built last year. So this whole thing, this relative clause, is referring to this house, okay? That's why it comes directly after it. You can't put this first in the sentence because it needs to come directly after the word house since it's talking about the house. Which house are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about the house that was built last year. Oh, that house, okay. And relative clauses are dependent clauses, which means they cannot be sentences by themselves. They depend on the independent clause. The independent clause is this part of the sentence or this part of the sentence. But these relative clauses are not sentences by themselves. We drove past my old school, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary. This whole clause here is talking about the school and it can't be a sentence by itself. Here's another example. The boy who is carrying a heavy backpack is tired. You can see the relative clause right here in the middle of the sentence. And of course, remember, a relative clause is dependent. It can't be a sentence by itself. But this part of the sentence, the boy is tired, that is independent. That could be a sentence by itself. I want to read the book that the boy was reading. So this whole thing here is the relative clause telling us more about the book. And one more example here. Mr. Lavin, who was my teacher in eighth grade, taught me about parts of speech. So this whole clause here, who was my teacher in eighth grade, tells us more about Mr. Lavin. We could eliminate that part and then you would just have the independent clause, which is Mr. Lavin taught me about parts of speech. But we put in the relative clause to tell us more about Mr. Lavin so that we understand him better. Now, 
Here's a chance to test yourself. Identify the relative pronouns and relative clauses in the following sentences. So read through these sentences. Push pause on the video. Figure out what the relative pronouns and relative clauses are, and then come back and check your answers. Here are the answers. How did you do? Hopefully now you understand relative clauses. And now we will move on to reduced relative clauses. So what is a reduced relative clause? Well, if you look at the word reduced, we know that the word reduced means to make something less or make it smaller. So let's see what that's about. Sometimes writers want to avoid using the words who, that, and which too often. So they use reduced relative clauses. A reduced relative clause is a bit shorter and more condensed than a regular relative clause. There are three ways to make reduced relative clauses. So the first way that we can make a reduced relative clause is first of all, we, we take the relative pronoun and we're gonna drop it. It's just gonna get dropped from the sentence. It won't be in the sentence anymore. And then after the relative pronoun usually comes a verb. And so we're gonna take the verb and we're gonna make it progressive by adding ing to the end. So here's an example. This is the regular way before it gets reduced. It would say people who live in the Middle East eat a lot of hummus. Now we're gonna reduce it. We're gonna get rid of the who. That's gonna get dropped. And then we're gonna take the verb and we're gonna add the ing. So then it becomes people living in the Middle East eat a lot of hummus. Here's another example. This is before it gets dropped, before it gets reduced. It says the wind that blows from the north is always cold. So we're gonna take away the that and then we're gonna add the ing to blows. So it says the wind blowing from the north is always cold. So here is a second way to create reduced relative clauses. The relative pronoun is dropped and then the verb becomes past participle by adding ed or en to the end. Now we usually do this second way because the verb might already be past participle. And you should look this up if you don't know what this is, just Google it. But in this case, we, we choose this second way because we're dealing usually with a past participle verb. In this case here, we have, here it is the regular way, the song that was sung first at the concert was beautiful. And since we already have we already have a past participle verb here in sung, so we're just going to drop the that and the was, and it becomes the song sung first at the concert was beautiful. And here's another example. The regular way would be the bracelet that was given to me by my mother is very precious. We already have a past participle verb here, so we're just gonna drop the that and the was, and it becomes the bracelet 
given to me by my mother is very precious. And then the third way to make reduced relative clauses once again we drop the relative pronoun and then what we have left which is going to be a, a verb that um, we're going to make it past participle if it isn't already and we're going to put the word being in front so being is put in front of the verb and then the, the verb becomes past participle and so it's going to end with an ed or an en. Let's look at an example. So the regular way before we reduce it, it would say the money that is collected will go to the new orphanage, which, and this is already a past participle verb, by the way, um, because it's passive. So we're just going to take out the that and the is and we're going to put in the word being. The money being collected will go to the new orphanage. And another example, before it's reduced, it says all the food items that are scanned need to be put into bags. We're just going to take out the that and the are. And then we're going to put in the word being in front of the verb. And then it says all the food items being scanned need to be put into bags. So we looked at three different ways to make reduced relative clauses. The first way we dropped the relative pronoun. The verb becomes progressive by adding ing. The second way we dropped the relative pronoun and the verb is past participle by adding ed or en to the end of it, or we just left the past participle verb as first in these cases. And the third way, we dropped the relative pronoun and then we put the word being in front of the past participle verb, like here, being collected or being scanned. So those were our three ways that we made reduced relative clauses. So now, test yourself and see, have you learned how to identify them. Read these sentences and identify the reduced relative clauses. Push pause, figure out your answers, and then come back and check. And here are the answers. How did you do?